hello ladies and gentlemen what is up what is up 37 minutes ago what just happened we have wrestlemania backlash and mind you i hate that fucking name i hate that name that name is incredibly stupid but 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 we know backlash backlash is a long standing wwe pay-per-view and we've got six matches on the card we reviewed it last night well we previewed it last night on uh the what just happened podcast now we had some pre-show shenanigans we obviously had a Cesaro defending his uh did he hold on let me make sure I I totally I totally totally missed the pre-show um did Cesaro I think Cesaro Cesaro Sheamus defended on the pay-per-view I'm, I've been drinking so forgive me um and he won he defended against uh Ricochet I don't remember the match so let's just get to the main show so we opened up with Rhea Ripley Charlotte Oscar the Raw women's championship now what you're going to see on this pay-per-view is you're going to see a trend um now i i ultimately i like this match okay so we get all three women and it starts out with um kind of charlotte trying to run and hide trying to be scared and that wasn't happening so they you know the women they go up to charlotte and then it's you know Rhea and oscar Charlotte overall starts to kind of get the lead. And anytime Charlotte really was in charge, the match suffered suffered. <laughs> suffered. Uh so we got a point where there was a, you know, the the action between Oscar and Rhea was good. Um and Charlotte did add some things to the show. So there's action going on um flair so there's a point of match flair takes down rip Rhea. um Rhea takes down charlotte and they're, they're just going back and forth oscar at one point gets the lead and then things start to take a turn so charlotte gets rid of oscar and charlotte's been charlotte starts going in control ultimately the theme of this match was to show that charlotte is superior than everybody that i don't like so we get near the end of the match right and charlotte's cockiness starts to get the better of her first of all charlotte hit this moonsault twice and you know she has the worst moonsault in the business charlotte is she needs to stop doing it io shirai please show this woman how to do a proper moonsault okay so everybody's trading punches everybody's trading headbutts and at a point I, uh, charlotte hits a double natural selection tries and she covers both women at the same time as a kick out charlotte then climbs the top rope hits another moonsault um but oscar and Rhea rolls out of the way charlotte lands on her feet oscar catches it with the double knees aka the cold breaker um, Rhea tries to go for the riptide on Asuka. Asuka rolls through. Asuka gets the Asuka lock in, but Rhea blocks it. Charlotte comes in. She kicks Rhea. Asuka grabs grabs her, puts in the Asuka lock. Charlotte rolls out of the way for the figure eight. Ripley kicks her on the outside. Charlotte kicks Rhea, and her momentum pushes her Charlotte off of the ropes, falls to the ground. Rhea hits the riptide on Asuka. One, two, three. Rhea retains. Um, like I said, this match, all this match really did was try to make Charlotte look superior, make her look better than everybody else, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling that. It, it felt more so that Rhea got lucky instead of it was a dominant win, and we had that same WWE thing when they, they do with triple threat matches, which is throw one person out of the ring and it's a one on one match in the ring. Um. At some point, Charlotte's going to win the championship. And that doesn't feel right. I never felt like Rhea is going to be a dominant champion. Charlotte will be champion before WrestleMania. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. But on to the show. 
Uh, so Johnny Drip Drip says he ran into some zombies. Miz didn't believe him. Keep that in the back of your mind, all right? Dominic gets jumped by Ziggler and Rude uh, for before the tag team title match. So you know what that means. You know what that means. It's it's pretty much telegraphed <laughs> that Ray and Dominic are going to win the tag team championships. And guess who won the tag team championships? Ray and Dominic. But let's but the match itself was very very good so ray wrestled large portions of this match by himself until dominic showed up rude and ziggler were hitting ray with everything and the kitchen sink at one point they hit uh ray with a uh wheelbarrow famouser and, I, and ray kicked out ray kicked out of the zigzag <sighs> boy ray <sighs> ray's a living legend now we get the moment where Dom is coming out, he's holding his ribs, and he puts in a little work, but Ziggler and Rude stay on top. That's what happens. But Ray's able to turn the tide. So let's go to the end of the match. Rude hits Dominic with a spine buster. And Dom's hurt, right? Ziggler gets tagged in, double team, neck break, a power bomb for a near fall. Okay. Um. Rude hits Mysterio with a tilt world backbreaker for a near fall. Nothing. So Ray's been kicking out of everything throughout this entire match. Rude sets up for a power bomb. Ray gives him, t- switches into a sit sign, drop to hold into the ropes. He hits the six one nine. Tags on Dominic. Dominic hits the. Dominic hits the frog splash. A la his dad. You'll get that. And Ray and Dominic are tag team champions. Now, here's my question. If you knew you were going to put the belts on Ray and Dominic, why not do this match at WrestleMania in front of the fans? Same thing with Natalia and Tamina winning Friday night. Why not do this match in front of the fans? Come on. Think. This match was 17 minutes. It was it was long. And you knew it was long. Did it earn that? I'm not sure, but we got two feel good moments uh, in in three days. Okay. 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 Uh, we got to find new challengers, so we have to take out Alpha Academy. We have to take out Rude and Ziggler. We have to take out the Street Profits. We have to find a new tag team for SmackDown. That's what we got to do. Now, Pretty much Ray, not Ray, sorry, Roman. We get backstage. He's telling, telling um, Jay, handle your cousin, boy. Handle, I'm sorry, handle your brother or cousin, my cousin. And Jimmy's like, yo, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't no bitch. <laughs> he wants Jay to be with him. But let's move on to Miz and <laughs> Demi Priest. Um, Backlash is sponsored by. Backlash is sponsored by Army of the Dead, the new Zack Snyder movie debuting this Friday on Netflix. So the Lumberjacks were actually zombies. They came shuffling out of the back, attacking the ring. The announcers ran. Now, there's going to be mixed segment feelings on this. I, on one hand, I loved it. I love the absurdity. If we, when we got the Fiend and Alexa Bliss, fuck it, give me some zombies, right? Give me some motherfucking zombies. Now, um, match was quick. <laughs> match was quick. Match only went about seven minutes, but the zombies played a part. Now, mind you, these are zombies, but they never once went inside the ring until after the match. Damien and uh, Miz fight the zombies off. Look, and, and then Damien Priest wins with the Reckoning. I'm fine with this. I love this. And then Miz and Morrison got eaten by the zombies. Um, take your pick. I don't know if you're going to like it or love it. <laughs> I'm fine with this. But, yeah. That happened. Next up, we had uh, Bianca 
versus Bailey with Bianca defending her SmackDown Women's Championship against Bailey. Um, what can I say about this match? Bailey is the veteran, so she was always going to use her smarts to drown, um, to to give her the advantage over Bianca Belair. Bianca has the strength, the speed advantage. She is the E S T, and let's just say Bianca's gotten a lot, lot better in the ring. Her skill has grown tremendously, and when you're in there with a veteran, a ring general like Bailey, you cannot have a bad match. And this was not a bad match. So Bianca is confident in, in the in the beginning of the match, in the early stages of the match, she's controlling Bailey. She's got her locked in, but after a while, Bailey's like, nah, fuck this. And she turns just turns it on. Um, I ultimately I love this match. There were so many moves. And then when Bailey got on top, she was like, she did the same thing Sasha was doing. Let's go, rookie. Let's go. Yeah, you know I mean, um, I didn't like the ending because Bianca just rolled up, rolled up, uh, Bailey with the most devastating move in all the sports entertainment. So it wasn't a dominant victory. It was a smart victory. Uh, both of these ladies worked really, really hard and I'd be fine with the rematch. Yeah, um, they'll definitely, mm, that's loud, they'll definitely face off again, and I'm not mad about that. Next up, we got the WWE Championship match. This is another triple threat match. Um, Bobby Lashley defending against Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman, and they really used the triple threat match the stipulation of there being no DQ. Because this was just big man meat slapping on each other. Suplexes, power bombs. Fucking Drew McIntyre hit a Michinoku driver on Braun Strowman, right? Uh, in the early beginnings of the match, uh, the goal was to take out Braun. And it kind of worked until it didn't work. Because then Braun got the upper hand. So, for a while, it was, you know, it was the standard one of the matches. But what, what really happened was that Drew and Bobby are fighting up the ramp to the stage, and Bobby gets thrown into the shadow realm. He's gets thrown into the LED nights, and he's gone, never, never to be seen from again. No, that's not true. Um, because now we just have a one-on-one -on -one match between La between um Drew and Braun. Drew's gotten a lot better. Um, Braun's trying, and his his he's 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 getting better. Um. Drew was setting up for the Claymore. Braun caught him, powerbomb him through the announce table. So, okay. Strowman gets into the ring while bringing in Drew. And Braun's about to finish his off. Drew get, gets out of it, hits the Claymore. Bobby comes in like, nah, dog. Throws Drew out, hits Braun with the spear. One, two, three. This was a fun match. Um... You knew Blasty was going to train, you uh, retain. You knew Braun was going to be the one to take the pin. Um, and I hate this thing about whoever doesn't get pinned is made to look strong in triple threat matches. It's so fucking stupid. These dudes went hard out of the gate, and I'm fine with that. But we need to get Bobby Lashley a new challenger. Okay, we got to get somebody new. All right. So our main event. Roman told Jay to stay in the back. Now, 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 now. This match. First of all, this match went. Do, do, do. How long did this match? This match went 27 minutes. And it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. I'm telling you right now, this match was so good. So, in the early beginning, it was all about. It was all about a test of strength between everybody, right? Roman nor Cesaro ever really got the upper hand. So they're they're testing each other. 
they're testing each other they're trying to see who can get their opinion roman roman can't outpower cesaro even though roman looks bigger than cesaro he cannot outpower cesaro okay so cesaro uses his strength to get ahead and for a while for long stretches of this match for long stretches of this match um For long stretches of this match, no one really got the upper hand. So, and that was that was good because near the end, when we're starting to turn, we're starting to do the turn, we're turning the match around. Um, we're turning the match around, and now we see. Now we see how the story is going to be turned and that that was good so yeah we get we get to the later stages of the match and now we're just doing submissions we're throwing punches we're doing everything roman gets the upper hand and he's in control and he thinks he's in control and he starts talking shit to cesaro but it ain't working it ain't flying and roman doesn't have an answer he's spears he's superman punches it ain't working dog cesaro has answers now throughout the entire match roman's been working on cesaro's arm so all of cesaro's moves are all of cesaro's moves are not as powerful they don't have that strong impact now now Cesaro's trying and he gets the upper hand. He's and he's got he's got power bomb in him. He finally locks in the sharpshooter, which he's been trying to lock in all match, gets it, and then transitions into a cross face. So they're building up, and I'm thinking, okay. Cesaro's got the upper hand. Where's Jay? Jay never shows up. Finally, Roman is able to transition out of all of this, starts pumping and Cesaro, locks in a guillotine. Cesaro gets out of the first one. Roman locks it in again. There was a there was a really everybody was doing the job because there was a part where Roman was just like flat out laid on the mat, and the ref had to count while Cesaro was putting in the sharpshooter, but Roman kicked out. Just got his shoulder up. That's smart. In the end, Cesaro passed out. The refs coughed the bell. Twenty seven minutes. This match was fucking phenomenal. After the match, Jay Uso shows up. Puts a whooping on Cesaro, gives Roman the lays, and then Seth shows up and takes out Cesaro, puts his arm in a chair, snaps that jaw, and gives him a curb stop. So I guess we're doing Cesaro and Seth again. Uh okay. Uh now what they could do is Cesaro could win this next match. We can't do 50-50 booking. Cesaro's got to earn his way back up. Seth. um, Didn't really need Seth or Jay showing up here. I could have just dealt with Roman standing tall. Really. Honestly. That's what we that's what we could have done. But um, hopefully this shows the WWE that Cesaro can be the guy. Be a B. Not even be the guy, be a guy, cause he he rose to the co- to to the occasion, and Reigns has been on a roll since coming back. So this was fucking dope. This was great, and I'm finding it hard to f- I'm finding it hard to see who's going to beat Roman, cause Roman should have lost. So Roman's last two defenses, he actually won clean with no chicanery. He beat Daniel. He beat Cesaro. But remember his matches against Jay and KO, he needed help. I don't know who's going to beat Roman Reigns. I don't know who's going to beat Roman Reigns. Um, Yeah. I don't know. Could it be Seth? Could it be... And Cesaro just lost. (sighs) That's how you build a character. But for the pay-per-view itself, solid work. This was... Minus the zombie shit. This was a good show. Um... 
I wish there were more than six matches. And the show ended at 10 o'clock. I wish... <sighs> if you're going to put Sheamus on the pre-show, give me something else. I really thought the women's statue titles were going to have a rematch on here. I could have dealt with more women on here. I could have dealt with... We could have put the Cruiserweights on here or something. But... So... This was still a good show. This was a very good show. Um, I'm going to give Backlash a 7 out of 10. But that's our show. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And um, come back to Saturday for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast as we'll be taking a look at the AEW's women's division. I am your host. I am the head of the table. I am Jeremy Pierce. And I will see you when I see you. Peace.